Hello guys and welcome to a FIFA 15 career mode video. Today we're starting my new FIFA 15 career mode and as I did say to someone on YouTube who commented and suggested a team, I am actually going to start off with Arsenal this year. So, before we go any further, can we hit a massive 40 likes for my first career mode video on FIFA 15? That would be absolutely fantastic. Now, a reason why I decided that I would choose Arsenal over my, obviously, favourite team, my team I support is Manchester United so you know it's, it's a bit of a weird one for me I'm gonna be trying to get Arsenal to win things and obviously I don't want that in real life but you know either way it's, it's gonna be a good season a career mode hopefully so as you can see the settings there world class five minutes a half uh, we're gonna update the latest squads and we're gonna put ourselves in Europe obviously Arsenal did make it through to the group stage this year as normal and that is you know pretty much a, a given now so this career mode, I'm I'm hoping for top four in the league. I'm hoping for progression past the group stages of Champions League and a good cup run in FA Cup or Capital One Cup would be great. I'm not expecting fucking winning the Champions League and winning the league. We might be able to do that in the second season once we've built up a very good strong squad. And obviously this first episode is going to be filled with transfers, targets, looking at all the new features of the FIFA 15 career mode. To start off with, I'm kind of disappointed really that there isn't much new features in this career mode. It's pretty much, uh, they've touched up on the graphical side and it's pretty much the same as FIFA 14 career mode. I mean, the gameplay is fantastic, don't get me wrong, I am absolutely loving the gameplay in FIFA 15. And there is a lot of features that I think have really made the game a lot better than the previous years. However, career mode is quite a disappointment. But, as usual, and it's one of my favourite things to do, we are going to be doing a, well, hopefully more than three career modes in FIFA 15. I'm going to try and get uh, this career mode done very quickly, and hopefully we can start the next career mode, which I'm eyeing up a few teams. Uh, I'm going to give you the vote out of the sort of like a five or six team selection, and hopefully I can start that before uh, December time. That would be great, and that's a good target for myself as well to carry on getting these videos out, pumping them out, one, two... Um, one, no, not one, two a day. Uh, you know, one a day would be a great target for myself. Bear in mind, I do work uh, near enough full time, uh, and I have lots of other things going on. So one a day would be great. But obviously, I reckon one every other day is sort of the main target to aim for. Now, as you can see, we're doing the global transfer network. You guys already knew that from previous years. However, what I found out this year is that your scouts actually start off in countries already looking for some targets set up from the club so this year um, with Arsenal uh, we've got strikers uh, all promising players and I think a defensive uh, midfielder or attacking midfielder something like that and as you can see um, also I am in need of a striker we've got Danny Welbeck which I think is a brilliant signer for Arsenal I can't believe we let him go to Arsenal this is just Blows my mind. I don't understand it. However, we're going to need another striker. I don't like Giroud. And in this game, if you <laughs> if you don't have pace up front, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. But uh, I'm not going to sell Giroud unless an offer comes in. Because we have Danny Welbeck and Giroud. And obviously, there's a few strikers I'm looking at. Danny Ings is a possible youngster that I could bring in. Martial, a very beasty striker, which I had in Atletico Madrid career mode last FIFA. Uh, I'm going to try and bring him in because apparently he's even better if not the same um, and also Benzema is one that you saw a little while ago someone that I am really looking to get as a striker would be such a perfect buy for Arsenal so I'm just doing some team adjustments and as you can see I've already brought on uh, Jack Wilshire he's partnering up Ramsey in the CDM positions we've got Sanchez out on that right wing um, Obviously, as you can see here, I'm just sorting out the subs and the reserves. I like to make sure everything's neat and tidy. Debussy's coming on. Chambers is going to the bench. And that is pretty much the lineup there. Very, very, very strong lineup. And obviously, I'm just looking at some of these youngsters. Uh, Campbell, uh, Nabry, or whatever the hell his name is. Looking very pacey and very strong in this game. Now, moving on to players that we're going to sell. And uh, that is something that I've had to think about. And make sure I, I do the right thing. So I'm going to offer up um, a lot of our youngsters for season-long loans. And obviously at the other end here, as you can see, we're going to offer up a few of the older players. Now Podolski, he is not really worth too much. And he's not really going to be a player that I want to use. So I'm going to get rid of him. Along with Michael Arteta, I don't think he's a great player, to be honest. And Rizitski, he is 33 years old. He's just going to decrease in value from now on. So get rid of them three. And that you know adds a nice transfer fund to the 
kitty we've already got and maybe we can buy another couple of players. As you can see here, Manchester City are trying to buy Mesut Ozil from us. That is no way going to happen unless they accept that £85 million counter offer. If they don't accept it, they're not getting them. End of. I am not going to sell our big stars. We're going to need them for this season. Moving on though, as you can see, a couple of strikers. I've already talked about Benzema Marshall. Another one is Rossi. Now I'm going to offer up an £18.5 million bid for him. He is not a bad striker and I've heard on Ultimate Team he is very overpowered. That would be great if he's the same in career mode. And again, Real Madrid have declined my Benzema offer. Or, I, I, know, I think that's my first official Benzema offer. And that's £30 million. Pounds. That's a nice big offer. Danny Ings, as I said, another sort of potential transfer target. He is not someone that I'm, you know, if they accept, I'm going to hold out and I'm going to sort of drag it out until I've signed other players. Hopefully we can sign the big one. And that is Benzema. That is, that is the main transfer target for me, myself in this opening transfer market. Maybe in January we can up the defence if we you know get a bit more money from competitions however you know I'm pretty sure once we well we're gonna need a centre back for definite a striker as I already told you about and probably a defensive midfielder as we're gonna get rid of Michael Arteta uh, Rizitsky so that they're pretty much one in each of them three positions I think will be fine for this first season um, it just depends really it really does depend as you can see Manchester City turned around and offered me 48 million pounds as Nowhere near what I said they could have him for, so I am just going to re reject that offer and we can move onwards. So, as I was saying, you know, it's still early on in this first episode. We're about seven minutes in, and this episode is just full filled to the brim with transfers, targets, and as I've already shown you, a few new features in the career mode. And as I said, it's a bit disappointing. There's not too much to show. Um, has a new features and you know I think that's pretty lazy of EA just to throw in pretty much the same copy and updated a few graphic things and added like one or two new things that's pretty much what they've done another player that I could buy for the squad is Morgan Schneider and he's had a great season with Southampton and his transfer value has rocketed sky high I'm offering up a nice sum for him I'm pretty sure Southampton are gonna want more along with Burnley here they want more for Danny Ings and uh, to right, really, they got, he got him. Um, he got Burnley into the Premier League, I believe. You know, he had such a great season with Burnley, scoring a lot of goals last season. And you know, something he's got a lot of pace to his game, and that is something again I'm looking for in a striker. Is some someone that's quick. I mean, I would love to get someone like Aguero, but I just simply can't afford. Aguero and sign a centre back and a centre defensive midfielder. Uh, Benzema, I'm pretty much limiting myself to 35 million pounds, and that is the highest I can go before I run out of funds to for, for you know other positions. It's just something that's that's what it's like, you know. It's what you have, and I'm working my way around it, trying to you know sort of angle things around. As you can see here, Rossi has actually accepted a contract offer for um, to come to the club. However, I'm holding out as as I said, I want Benzema, and I can't really. If I sign Rossi, I can't afford Benzema, <coughs> and I'd rather have Benzema over Rossi, so I'm sort of waiting out, seeing what happens. Uh, Swansea want Lucas Podolski, offering up 3.6 mil. They can have him for 6 mil. That is a respectable offer for an actual very decent player. I mean, he's not too quick, <coughs> but he's, you know, he's not... He's not shy. He's got some real good shooting ability. He can take a good free kick. He can whip balls in from the wing. He just lacks that pace which you need as a winger. And I don't. I'm not really going to play him as a, a striker with uh, Welbeck and potentially a new signing as well coming in. So uh, five and a half mil. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fine. You're going. Sorry, Podolski. It's your last. Uh, <laughs> it's the end of the career for you uh, with Arsenal. So you're going to have to move on. Um, another player there though. Luis Gustavo, now that is a very good potential signing. Now Luis Gustavo is a centre defensive midfielder. He's quick, he's strong, he's quite an all-round player as well. He can shoot, he can dribble and that is someone I really wouldn't mind signing. He'd be a great signer for the club and he would not cost too much. He's not overpriced. I reckon I could get him just under £20 million. That is a good, good signing if we do. It's obviously all down to what happens with Benzema and a few others. Uh, obviously, moving to centre back now, Socrates, who plays for Borussia Dortmund, a very solid centre back, quite quick as well for a centre back. 
And I'm not signing everyone with pace. Just to let you know, guys, it's not pace. I'm not going for pace, pace, pace. I'm trying to find the best sort of uh, player for the position I'm required to sign for. <clears throat> as well as transfer value and what they offer. So, oh my god, my fr my so I'm really apologise, guys. My throat has gone all tingly, so apologies if I keep having to go away and cough. I, every time I slow down my voice, it's because it's tingling and I feel like I'm going to like cough into the mic. <coughs> so anyway, enough of that. <laughs> we actually have officially signed Karim Benzema. Now that is an absolute fantastic signing. I can't believe we've actually done it. Arsenal have officially signed Benzema and that is the transfer of the summer so far. Well, obviously in this career mode. Um, all the latest transfers have obviously been updated, so they technically sort of count slash don't count. I'm not too sure. But either way, a few other youngsters that I'm looking to buy. Obviously, Giroud is not a, a, a player I really want in the club. However, if he's there, he will be played. Not too much, but he will be played um, in with you know within the two sort of uh, the teams, you know, away home games, different competitions. He will be, will be played. I'm going to do a cheeky offer, as you can see here, 15 mil plus Giroud for Cavani. If they accept that, I am laughing, but I doubt it. I very much doubt it. As you can see here, I'm offering up a contract offer for Luis Gustavo. They accepted a bid. I think it was around 20 million pounds. And obviously, I'm not going to sign Gustavo straight away. Uh, I do need a centre-back really uh, more than I do as a centre-defensive mid. Because we literally have Mertesacker, Koscielny and... I think that is pretty much it for centre backs as we as it goes. Luke Chambers can play as a centre back, but holy crap, we are really lacking uh, in the defensive uh, department. We've got enough right backs and left backs. We've got like one or two of e in each position, which is pretty damn awesome. Uh, contract offer has been accepted from Danny Ings, but again, I'm not going to sign him until we make sure the defence is sorted. Uh, Stadia Renz have offered seven and a half mil for Rizitsky. Or Riziki, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, he is gone. Yep, that's 7.5 mil added to the transfer funds. Enough for another player. Uh, obviously, Socrates was one centre-back. And Castan is another one. The Roma, I think he's Brazilian. And he's a, he's a decent player. He's nothing special. He's 27 years old as well. So I'm a bit... I'm not too sure whether or not I want to buy him. So, moving on to a new feature of career mode. And that is the team sheets. As you can see here, you name your team sheet, you come in, you select your side, your formation, roles, instructions, tactics, and then you save that and you have two team sheets. You can do, I think, three, four, five. I'm not I'm not sure on the limit for team sheets, but it's pretty damn useful, especially when you're like me and you can't be bothered to change the whole squad around. And as you can see, I've named the Arsenal away. I've kept the same formation, pretty much the same tactics, but pretty much fielded a complete different eleven. And it's very useful. You can just flick between the two, and if you want to play a match, that team's already lined up there, and then you can flick back to your default uh, team, or your strongest team, or whatever team you want to use. It's pretty useful also if you have, like, you know, you're playing the FA Cup, Capital One Cup, Champions League, you can have one team sheet for each competition, as well as home and away. You know, it's really, really useful. Going away from the team sheets, we are midway through a friendly actually coming to the end of the friendly as you can see we have just gone 3-0 up against Almeria I am simming all the friendlies because I absolutely hate them if you've watched my career mode videos before you know that I sim all friendlies I played I think one season where I done the friendlies and it it's just so tedious so annoying they're so pointless uh, it's all about building your squad but I mean I, I, I'd rather just not do that just sim the friendlies and, and do it from there in so I do believe Rizitsky has officially been sold for 7.5 mil, and we now have a nice transfer budget. Uh, I'm not too sure. I think it's, it's about 24 mil we've got left over after signing Benzema. I'm not too sure who I want to buy yet. I'm still tempted because, I mean, if I sign Gustavo, I can't sign Castan. If I sign Castan, I can't sign Gustavo. Uh, sort of, uh, you know, who do I want? Who do we need more? We do need a centre back more. But we're going to sim some more friendlies and find out, if, you know, try and get a couple more centre backs and see if we can get anyone cheaper uh, and find someone stronger. If we do, then we'll probably sign them and hopefully sell another player and have enough money to sign Gustavo as well. And if so, that'll be absolutely brilliant. The next friendly, as you can see, we're just going 1 0 up thanks to Oxlade Chamberlain. 
and it's against Atletico Madrid. It's an away match as well, and I just used the team sheet. You might have seen, might have saw me flick through it. As you can see, it's two one now. <laughs> Fucking hell, it's it's going well. Um, as you can see, Godin had to go off injured. We actually missed apparently early on, but. You know, simming the friendlies is not a big deal, and I hope you guys don't mind me doing that. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are, you know, might be relieved that I do that. I'm not too sure. But, you know, we're coming to sort of the last few minutes of this first episode in the Arsenal career mode. And again, I'm just going to reiterate, it's basically transfers, targets, sorting out the squad, showing new features, etc, uh, etc. Et There's no actual footage of gameplay in this video because we just simply don't have time to fit all of that in. Uh, we have to leave so much out if we want to see gameplay footage in this first first episode. However, we do kick off the next episode with a big match. And it's coming up. It's the Community Shield against Manchester City. And that's what we're going to be kicking off with in the episode after this. And as you can see, we're coming up to the third and final friendly match before we kick off our season. And obviously, transfer window goes all the way to the end of August. So we've still got plenty of time to sign another defender. And obviously, if I feel that we're going to lack in midfield after playing City um, in the Community Shield, maybe I can then uh, sign someone that's a bit cheaper than Gustavo and slot them in the centre defensive midfield as well as signing a centre-back. So priorities is now it's just a centre-back and maybe, possibly, a defensive midfielder. Other than that, we have signed Benzema. And we've sold a few players, loaned out a few players, and that is our transfer activity so far. As you can see, coming to the end of this match, we are simulating. It's 1-0, and it does finish 1-0 as Alexis Sanchez scores again. He's, I think he scored two or three goals in the friendly matches now. That is pretty damn epic, considering I'm so looking forward to using him on career mode. I mean, in Ultimate Team, he's so overpowered. I don't know what the hell they've done to him, but he's such a quality player. And we are going to move... Oh, just before we do, though, we have an offer for Giroud. Uh, I'm going to counter-offer that offer from AC Milan for £14 million. If they accept that and offer that, or even close to that, I will accept that player. And he can be gone, and we can get rid of Giroud. A player that could potentially re replace Giroud as a sort of like a substitute slash squad rotation player is Martial. Someone that I do want to bring to the club. Uh, he's, he's such a quality player. As you can see here, we do accept an offer here. 12.5 mil for Giroud. I will accept that. And AC Milan, you can have him. Very, very nice, generous offer. And also, we're going to have to up our game with uh, Marshall because uh, Monaco have accepted another bid for him. Uh, I'm not too sure if we're going to sign him before the end of this episode. We are pretty much out of time guys it's been a great first episode and i'm glad to be back doing career mode after a whole week and a bit off and <laughs> it's exciting times i just can't wait to get it started so i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode it's been filled with transfer we have signed kareem benzema that is such a big sign in make sure you stay tuned because we've got episode two coming out very shortly as long as some ultimate team content coming out for fifa 15 but until next time guys take care and i will see you when we play manchester city in the community shield